So I know that you've been looking in your closet, realizing there's not nearly enough quillfish drip in there. Luckily, now there is switching to ballin' real quick merch available. It comes in both hoodies and t-shirts with a whole bunch of different color options. Hit that link in the description and check it out. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have a really good match here using a brand new team that I've been messing around with. This squad you know, has some really fun Pokemon that I kind of just wanted to see uh, if I could get to do some stuff. So if you enjoy these videos, as always, make sure to hit that like button on the video and consider subscribing. I will uh, be continually uploading these Wi-Fi battles if you guys seem to enjoy them. So got a pretty interesting matchup here. My opponent is definitely bringing some threats. There's you know some setup opportunity like the Cloister. They got that Breloom. Um, Ambipom is always scary and generally, you know, just kind of uh, a pretty threatening team. But, as always, I have faith in my never used homies. So, let's get right into the match here. From the start, I am going to expect them to probably lead off with that Ambipom, as people generally do. Get that fake out uh, and the Mew turn shenanigans. The unfortunate part is, I really don't have anything to do about that. I kind of just have to uh, let it happen here. So, <laughs> I'm going to lead off with Lemon. As I know that they have the uh, the Espeon in the back pocket, so I'm kind of scared to set up the Stealth Rock. Obviously, the Magic Bounce is probably going to be their next play here. So they get a huge amount of damage off of that Fake Out, and uh, just kind of just just juices my lemon here, just squeezing the juice out of my head. As now they go for the U-turn. Unfortunately, Uxie kind of has to just deal with being below half just right from the start. And that's kind of, you know, what you get when you're playing against Ambipoms and you don't have, like, a good Steel type. So, I know that the Espeon is going to come in. I predict that and go for the U-turn. Ordinarily, I would want to set up the Stealth Rock there, but of course, I would rather not uh, get Magic Bounced on. So, that's pretty great. I say, la 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 la, you will never get this. Uh, your Magic Bounce is going to have to hang out for later. So, uh, this allows me a free switch and actually also gives me a little bit of momentum here. And I can just bring in Pinsir for free, which is amazing. So... Um, if I bring in Pinsir against an Espeon, they probably know that it's going to be Choice Scarf. Uh, I end up just going right for the X Scissor anyway, because generally at the start of matches, I don't really want to overpredict too much. Um, I'm just going to go over the safe plays here and kind of scout out what the opponents, you know, you just feel, feel out what they're working with, you know? So, they end up switching into this X Box, and he's able to take a little bit of chip damage from that X Scissor, which is always nice. Metagross, you know, is a scary Pokemon, my team doesn't handle it. Uh, especially well, so I've got to try to uh, try to chip this thing a little bit. So I want to save Pinsir for later. Uh, Choice Scarf is going to be great against things like that Espeon and all sorts of stuff. So I end up switching into uh, Uxie. I was actually expecting this thing to potentially go for like Stealth Rock or something, uh, but goes for the Meteor Mash there, and I actually am able to live that, which is amazing. Now this puts me in a position where I could get up Stealth Rock of my own, or I could expect them to just go right back into that Espeon. Um, so I'm thinking U-turn is probably going to be my safest bet here. Metagross says, Psych bitch, you thought, and hits me with a bullet punch. So, I know that this thing is working with Meteor Mash, bullet punch. It's got leftovers, so I don't know how bulky this thing is, but um, kind of a little bit annoying there. But Uxie goes down, it wasn't really going to be all that useful in the long game, because I was already below half and pretty crippled. Uh, the good news is, I'm able to now switch into whatever I would feel like, and I'm thinking, you know what, Pinsir, let's go out here and do your thing. Um, I know it's probably going to take like two Earthquakes to knock this thing out, but Pinsir can likely uh, take an attack from this thing. So I go for the Earthquake, get some big damage, uh, one more is in range, but he goes for the Meteor Mash here, and I do take it, but I don't really feel like I should stay in and take a Bullet Punch. Um, I do want to conserve Pinsir, this thing, my Choice Scarf user is going to be super valuable for me at this point, so I'm going to save that thing, and I realize that Quillfish actually has a pretty nice switch in here. And any opportunity I can, I like to switch into Ballin real quick. So, I decide to switch into Ballin real quick. Shout out to you if you get the reference. Um, I'm thinking, alright, I get to intimidate it, but then I realize that Clear Body is a thing. And that's kind of unfortunate. But they do go for the Bullet Punch there. And even without an Intimidate, Ballin just be soaking up that damage like a fucking monster. Look at this absolute behemoth on the battlefield over here. Quillfish is the goat, and you can't tell me otherwise. So... Uh, looking at the face of this Metagross, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to dance with swords. I'm, I'm going to get this Quillfish going, and you can't stop me. So I go for the swords dance here as they actually end up switching into the Breloom. Uh, probably just expected like a Choice Banded Waterfall or something like that, but instead, you mess with the Quillfish and you get the swords. Now this guy's looking just extra sharp out here. Not the kind of dude that you want to play with. And at this point, I can just go right for the poison jab, and there's honestly no way this uh, this martini garnish is going to be living that. So max attack, max speed, quillfish is going to put it on him, and that does take care of the Breloom. Luckily not focus sash, 
Uh, that would be unfortunate because I wasn't able to get up my Stealth Rock, but we are able to take care of that thing, and Breloom is a huge threat out of the way. Uh, quick note, that does actually open up the opportunity for um, for Zangoose because now I don't have to worry about Mach Punch. So, um, in comes the Espeon, and at this point, they do not know about the Aqua Jet. They're thinking Espeon comes in, about speedy as hell. I'm able to outspeed and kill me with a Psychic, but you thought incorrectly as well, and <laughs> Aqua Jet... Uh, after the plus two does take care of the Espeon. So that is two down, and Quillfish is just over here on an absolute rampage, just ripping holes in this man's team, and you just, you, you love to see it. So, uh, now they decide to bring in the big guns, which is the Ambipom, and a Pokemon that my team hates. I mean, most teams do. Ambipom is honestly super good, and it's actually underused at the moment, but... Uh, Ambipom is going to scare me with a fake out, but I'm thinking I can maybe potentially actually even take one. Um, if I can live one, I can hit it actually pretty hard with an Aqua Jet. So they do go for uh, the Fake Out there. I am able to live it with 16 HP. It actually puts me in range to take two more Life Orb recoils. So I just go for the Aqua Jet here. If the Ambipom stayed in, that would have been fine to just get that damage off on it. Um, but they decide to go into old Metagross here. So unfortunately, Aqua Jet does not quite do enough to take this thing out. And, you know, that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, because then I would at least be able to get an Aqua Jet off on one more thing if it wasn't the Ambipom. If not, then Ambipom would have come in and had to waste a fake out. So they actually end up uh, switching here and they decide to go into Milotic. That would have been an absolute baller play had I predicted that and gone for the Poison Jab. But at that point, I just was just mashing Aqua Jet. Um, I realistically probably should have clicked Poison Jab because even if they just went for the Bullet Punch or just over predicted or something, I could have uh, I could have easily just taken care of that. Metagross regardless on with pretty much anything on my team. So um, I now get an empty battlefield and it's now time to bring out the plug and you know He's serving death as that you do not want this is not the type of plug that you want to hit up So um, I'm just gonna go for the Thunderbolt. They don't have any switch-ins really to a Thunderbolt here So um, there's no reason not to go ahead and click that and they decide to just go into the Metagross Quick shout out to Electivire is honestly such a great Pokemon right now just because of the fact that it's got really good coverage for a lot of the big threats that you see in Overused especially. It's got Ice Punch for things like Gliscor, um, it has Flamethrower for Scizor that's on like every team, and it has the ability to, to be a mixed attacker which is amazing. But anyway, they decide to bring in this big old Water Vagina and I'm just going to go right for a Thunderbolt. I, potentially they Shell Smash. Um, they live with the Focus Ash, get the Shell Smash up, and then um, knock me out. But I do still have Quick Attack on my Zangoose. I figure if that's what they want to do, that's totally fine. I go for the T-Bolt, knock it to the Sash, and actually end up getting the, para the Paralyze, and it gets fully parried. So, uh, you truly hate to see it, but I told you not to mess with the plug. They actually end up trying to get an Ice Shard off, just a last-ditch effort before death. But they get fully parried there too, so... I mean, you know, Electivirus is living up to his name here. And that is going to be a dead cloister. You know, it is kind of a bummer, but that's you know, that's the way Pokemon goes. So, now they get a free switch, and they go into Milotic. Of all things, I was really expecting the Ambipom. Um, but I'm like, you know what? That's totally fine. I'm just out here rubbing my hands together, thinking, all right. They end up going for a Protect there. Uh, I guess just to kind of scout out or just get some uh, leftover recovery, I mean. So, it gives it, you know, that little, that little bite of that apple is going to allow it to, you know, for sure live this next one. But... So I've got no reason to do anything crazy here. I'm just going to stay in and continue to hit Thunderbolts. I know that this thing can definitely live one because it's about the bulkiest thing on this side of the Mississippi. Um, as you'll see here, it's actually going to be Mirror Coat. So I was kind of thinking if they were going to bring in a Milotic against Electivire, it's got to be Mirror Coat. And it turned out to be. So, you know, that kind of is a bummer. But Electivire did what it needed to do. And also, more importantly, I was able to get the chip that I needed on this Milotic for uh, Zangoose to kind of do its thing. So I bring in the old Zangoose. Tail looking absolutely about fluffy as shit. Look at the dump truck on this last. My god. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, shout out to Zangoose. This is a super fun Pokemon. I really like using this thing. Um, I am just going to go right for a Swords Dance here, thinking maybe they protect, and if not, I can definitely take an attack. They do actually end up uh, going for that protect, and allows me a free Swords Dance. And I'm just I'm just out here Swords Dancing all over the place. And uh, that's, that's pretty great, because now, pretty much nothing can, can face the... The wrath of this here, Zangoose. And you know, back in high school, they used to call Zangoose the uh, the janitor. And that's because all they do is be sweeping. So I'm just going to get that late game sweep here. Going to go for the facade. Um, there's no scenario where you'd be living that. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Zangoose strategies, essentially, um, it carries the ability Toxic Boost, which actually boosts your attack. 
Um, with Paired with Facade, you're able to get that huge stab damage, and there's not a whole lot that can take that. So, their last Pokemon is going to be that Ambipom that I've just been worried about this entire match, but that is fine because I know I can take at least one Fake Out, and that's why it's great that they didn't... Um, that's what they, they didn't attack Zangoose because that allowed me to take that fake out. And at this point, all I have to do is go for the quick attack at plus two. Stab quick attack uh, is going to absolutely tear that Ambipom in two. So that's going to be that's gonna be the uh, the end of the match there. If Zangoose did go down, I did still have uh, Choice Scarf um, Pinsir in the back for the close combat to finish that off. But I thought that was a pretty fun match. It's really fun using this team. And uh, I had a good time. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, subscribe if you are new here and don't forget to check out that switch into ballin real quick merch because he just put in that absolute work uh, to sell some merch <laughs> all right peace out guys